Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. Um, anybody that's watched my channel any length of time knows that I like taking history and applying that to uh, modern day preparedness. And today is no exception to that. I am uh, making a Panis Quantris. And what that is, is that's a uh, Roman style loaf of bread. And I'm going to take you uh, through grinding the uh, grain for this all the way up through baking that. So you guys stick around. Alright, I'm out here in the greenhouse uh, because it's raining outside. Um, wanted to have a little bit of cover while I'm doing this. Uh, I'm grinding my uh, grain here for uh, my uh, Panis Quantris, my Roman bread that I'm making today. Um, I have a got a hard white wheat here that I'm using and then I have some uh, bulgur here. This is a red bulgur. I'm trying to uh, recreate the Mediterranean grains as uh, best I can with the stuff that I have here at the uh, house. Um, to make this Roman style bread, uh, the red bulgur there is uh, something that would have been used in ancient times around the Mediterranean. Uh, Cerilius is the actual uh, Latin name, what they called that at the time, kind of where we get our uh, cereal grain name today. Um, I got my uh, hand grain mill up here, and um, the big thing with these hand grain mills when you're uh, grinding your grain, you don't want to add very much in. You don't want to fill this hopper right up, so you just want to add in maybe about a half a cup at a time about like so and then as you start grinding this you kind of want to take your time you don't want to get rammy with this you just want to uh, grind real slow and then from time to time you want to back up just a little bit as you can see there it's kind of grinding uniform that's what I want for this I'm gonna need about um, eight cups of flour total for this so I'm going to do about half and half and see there how it uh, how it's grinding we got our bran in there but then you got uh, your nice white flour in there as well you can sift this if you want to I'm not gonna because uh, they wouldn't have sifted this in Roman times they would have just uh, went ahead and used this uh, the way it was so back up here and you can kind of tell when it binds up a little bit that's when you need to put you will need to back up just a little bit like so and that'll keep your uh, grinded much smoother all right when I start grinding the uh, bulgur I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like too all right I finished my uh, whole wheat flour here that's what it looks like after it's ground got about five cups here um, now I'm doing my red bulgur Let's see once what that looks like um, the flour from the uh, red bulgur is a lot coarse, um, coarser, and it's a uh, more of a reddish brown uh, flour. This flour right here, you're probably going to want to grind twice if you would uh, ever want to use this for baking, because it won't get fine enough um, the first time around. You can adjust uh, these grain mills here using this right here. Um, adjust the grind on it. Um, with adjusting the grind, though. Um, Sometimes it's better to grind it a little bit coarser and then go ahead and grind it a second time because if you try to grind it just once on the real fine setting, it's going to be very, very difficult. I'm going to add a little bit in here and show you once what it looks like when it comes out of here. I'm just going to put in about yeah, maybe a quarter cup, maybe just a little bit more plus what's in there. And same principle as the uh, wheat flour. We're going to just slowly crank, backing up from time to time. red bulgur looks like when it's ground. After I got this ground up here, then we're going to take this in and we're going to mix this up for our Roman meal bread. Back in the house now, I um, wanted to show you guys the uh, contrast between these uh, two different kinds of flour, um, the uh, wheat flour and the uh, red bulgur flour. Um, most of these Roman bread recipes call for between seven and eight cups of uh, flour. Uh, different kinds of flour were used in these uh, ancient Roman recipes, uh, spelt flour being one that was used quite commonly. I don't have any uh, spelt, so I uh, decided to uh, use uh, red bulgur instead. Uh, um, and a lot of these ancient uh, Roman recipes come from uh, excavations from uh, 
uh, Pompeii and Herculaneum, uh, they had uh, bakeries that were covered up with ash and they were able to uh, retrieve um, carbonized loaves and then they were analyzed. Most, uh, I guess the most notable one was done by the British Museum. They analyzed uh, the loaf and came up with these uh, recipes and most of those uh, recipes that uh, people have now for these ancient Roman uh, loaves of bread come from those uh, experiments by the British Museum. Um, I'm going to go over the uh, ingredients real quick here for you guys. Um, this is uh, my sourdough starter. Uh, most uh, Roman bread recipes would have used some type of sourdough starter as a uh, leavening agent. Um, they would have used uh, grape skins um, soaked in water to uh, um, collect the naturally occurring yeast off those grape skins. I don't have uh, any grapes yet, but I do have grape plants, so I took a little bit of uh, flour and a little bit of water, and I uh, put that in a jar with a piece of cloth over top of it and put it out underneath my uh, grape plants uh, a few days back to uh, collect the uh, natural yeast that I have in my area there, so it was as close as I could get it to uh, how the Romans did it. Um, another thing that goes into these Roman uh, loaves is uh, salt. And I have about a half a uh, tablespoon of uh, kosher salt here. And then I have some uh, ground coriander. A lot of the uh, historical references uh, talk about some type of uh, seasoning that would go in the bread, either herbs or spices. And coriander, along with uh, fennel, parsley, were some of the ones that uh, historically were used. So I'm going to add a little bit of uh, ground coriander here into my loaf. After I got this uh, flour mixed up here, I'm going to uh, show you how I add my starter and uh, my other ingredients into this so I can get this loaf going for you. All right, you can see here my uh, flour. I've got this mixed with my uh, salt, my coriander, and my two different flours. Now I'm going to add my uh, sourdough starter in the center. i got a little bit of a bowl here, and then I'm going to work my uh, flour in. I'm just going to add all this starter in. This is a little bit more than a cup. Might as well use it all up. Of course, you could keep that starter going if it was a, you know, a bad situation where you needed the leavening agent. You could just add flour to that every day and uh, keep it uh, fed and just make a loaf of bread every day out of it. So I'm just going to work my uh, starter into my flour. And then we're going to add water as we need it. And water is going to be real, just a little bit at a time, just a real small amount, because we don't want to get this too uh, wet to begin with, because I have a small amount of flour that I reserve for uh, kneading and dusting, but I don't want to use um, all of that up right away, because I don't want to have to grind any more flour. And this water is uh, lukewarm. Keep the yeast happy. starting to come together. Now this is going to be a real solid loaf because of all the uh, ground whole wheat um, flour that's in this. Just a little bit more in here. I got probably about a uh, cup and a half of water along with my cup and a half of starter in this.
heating. It's starting to feel uh, nice and incorporated now. The dough's holding together a little bit. Kind of form this into a round ball here. Press it down just a little bit. Got a real aromatic uh, smell with that coriander and that uh, sourdough starter. All right, now we're just gonna cover this up and we're gonna let this set for about uh, two hours or so so it can uh, rise a little bit. All right, I'm a couple hours into this here and I started kneading this uh, loaf. I just got uh, wet hands and uh, it's just basically uh, kneading and folding just like this, spinning it each time we're going to try to develop the gluten that's in here to uh, keep our loaf uh, together while we're baking. And I'm going to do this for probably about uh, 15 more minutes. All right, I've kneaded this loaf and uh, I've placed it on my baking stone with some of the reserve flour and bran from what I ground this morning. And now comes something that's uh, unique to these Roman loaves and nobody really knows why they did it. Um, they scored a mark around the outside edge of uh, the loaves, about at the middle of the loaf. And uh, some speculate they did this with a ring or with uh, twine and that's what I'm going to actually use today. And um, they don't really know why they did this. They don't know if that had uh, something to do with carrying the loaf or hanging the loaves up. Uh, but I'm going to recreate that here with just a piece of twine. I've already got a groove kind of marked out here. And I'm just going to uh, take this cotton cooking twine here, kind of snug it up a little bit. And then I'm going to tie just a regular bow in this. just like so, and then that's going to uh, stay on uh, while I bake it. All right, I got that trimmed off now, and uh, in a couple of seconds here, I'm gonna show you guys how I uh, put the uh, marks in the top of the bread. All right, I've got my uh, twine along the bottom here, and now I'm gonna do something that's also unique to these Roman loaves, and that was is they divided these into uh, sections, and uh, some people will slash these loaves to recreate this. Uh, I'm actually going to use a bamboo skewer here, but uh, this was so that it bakes in sections so it can be broke evenly for members of the family. And I actually wetted this skewer a little bit before I started. And then I'm going to take a, a wooden spoon and poke down in the center. Just like so. Now we're going to let this set and we're going to ra let it raise for about uh, 20 minutes or so. And then it's going to go into a 400 degree oven. Here is the finished loaf. Uh, I baked this at uh, 400 degrees for about 45 minutes. You can notice there's a little bit of cracking on the top, but that's to be expected with the uh, hand ground grain that we uh, used for this. You can see the line down there where we tied our uh, string on the bottom and uh, the vent hole on top to vent the uh, steam out. It's got a real pleasant uh, nutty smell with that uh, coriander uh, baked into it and you can see here the nice uh, eight individual uh, sections for breaking for the family. Just wanted to uh, share this old uh, time recipe with you guys here. Um, this one's a little bit older than uh, the stuff I normally share with you guys but just uh, using history and applying that to uh, modern preparedness. But anyway this is Modern Refugee. I appreciate all my subscribers out there. Hope you guys are getting a little information, a little entertainment out of my videos and uh, you guys have a great day.